All right, I'm going to show you something really, really interesting. Stephen Anderson's really weird view on Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble, and he totally denies the 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7. He flat out denies it. And of course, he's done videos trying to explain away the 144,000, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's been refuted. But he flat out denies that God has preserved 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. And of course, it lines up with this whole post trib thing because he thinks that Christians are going into the time of Jacob's trouble. And at the time, of, of course, he doesn't call it the time of Jacob's trouble. He uses the new version terminology of the Great Tribulation because the modern versions, the Catholic versions, use that terminology. Because the tribulation is never used, it's used as a description but never as a title. Okay? Revelation 7.14. Then, sorry, that these are, are they which came out of great tribulation. Use as a description, paraphrasing, of course, in Revelation 7 14. Or you got Matthew chapter 24, I think it's verse 21 22, where it talks about then shall there be great tribulation. It does not say then shall there be the great tribulation. It's never used as a title, it's always used as a description of this coming time period. The coming time period is called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30 verse 7. And you can compare Jeremiah 30 verse 7 with Matthew chapter 24 verse 21 22 and it lines up. So yes, it is talking about the uh, tribulation because Anderson also tries to deny, uh, he did this in other videos, he tries to deny that the, tr the, the tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. But he flat out denies what God's word says in Revelation chapter 7 verses 3 to 8. Going to show you this from one of his videos uh, where he's going through someone exposing him and you know it's, it's one of these independent fundamental baptist guys and i'm not a baptist i'm not an independent fundamental baptist and they have their own problems both old ifb and new ifb have their problems but at least the old ifb is more doctrinally sound than the new ifb i mean the old ifb is dispensational they are pre-trib they are pro-israel in the sense of they understand that god is not done with israel okay just when I say I'm pro-Israel, I'm not saying that I support everything that goes on over in Israel, the sin and wickedness that goes on over in Israel. I'm not saying I support every single thing the Israeli government does. Okay, true biblical Zionists, I don't like that term, but uh, true biblical Christians who support Israel, support Israel uh, in the extent of we support their right to be there in that land physically. Okay, we're not like John Hagee and his other guys who say that the Jews don't need to get saved. They're already saved people just because they're Jewish and that just have this unquestioning obedience to Israel. No, that's not scriptural. Okay, a biblical Christian supports the Jews' rights, the Jewish people's right to be there in that land. Okay, and that's it. I don't support the Israeli government. They're controlled by the Jesuits. So I don't have time to get into that. But you're going to see Anderson flat out denies what. Um, that fact that God has preserved 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. So apparently, and it's funny too, because Anderson supports interracial marriage, the sin of interracial marriage. Meanwhile, by his logic, if there are no more tribes that, are, that exist, it's because of the sin of interracial marriage. So like he's, he's contradicting himself, but what do you expect? So anyway, let's get right into this. So notice, in the regeneration, in the resurrection, the 12 apostles are going to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel amen but guess what that is not the people that are in the middle east right now because those people over there in the middle east right now that call themselves israelis they are not 12 tribes none of them knows what tribe they are okay they are jews but they are not the 12 tribes of israel you see when the fullness of the gentiles has come in and if we actually study scripture to get that timing, we know that's the millennium. You've got the resurrected saints. Um, you know, the fullness of the Gentiles comes in at the quote-unquote rapture. The proper term would be the resurrection or the pre-time Jacob trouble resurrection. But the fullness of the Gentiles comes in at the rapture. Because at that point, the church age, which again, I don't like that term. I think the proper term would be the time of the Gentiles. At that point, has been fulfilled. And basically, God is now... He resurrects his Gentile saints before the, the tribulation and goes back to dealing with the nation of Israel. Okay? That's why it says all Israel shall be saved. Why? Because at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Actually, let, let me just go to the scripture just, just so I have the right reference. Um, because these are scriptures that Anderson tries to butcher. And here's a really good verse that these new IFB cultists just do not like. Romans chapter 11 verses 1 to 2. I say then, hath God cast away his people? That's the main question. Hath God cast away his people? 
Well, Paul answers Anderson's question, and Paul refutes Stephen Anderson. Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Okay, well, who are his people? Well, Paul explains. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. And Anderson will try to say, well, Paul, Paul, he got saved, so that's that's what makes him a seed of a uh, seed of a uh, seed, seed of Abraham, an Israelite. Um, no, we're going to see about that, but no, that's not the case. Paul is a physical descendant of Abraham who did get saved, and praise God for that. He got out of the false religion, the satanic false religion of of Talmudic Judaism, and towards Jesus Christ. Look at verse two. Paul again reiterates and refutes Stephen Anderson. Hath God cast away? Sorry, had God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew? What not what the Scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel? And he goes down. But you say, well, well Paul was referring to uh, spiritual Jews. Well, let's see about that. Uh, here it is. Uh, here's a good one to answer them on that. Uh, Romans chapter nine verses three to four. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh who are his kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites who, who to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God uh, and the promises and it says whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God bless forever amen okay so who is Paul referring to when he says has God cast away his people Israelites, physical Israelites. Paul's not referring to, well, uh, spiritual Jews or something like that. It's ridiculous. Or Paul's not referring to himself as a spiritual Jew. His brethren, he's, he's physically an Israelite, but he's saved. He is a Jew, a Christ-rejecting Jew who got saved. But anyway, on this thing of uh, of God, on the whole thing of the time of the Gentiles and everything like that, it's funny, here's another good verse to use against, just a bit of a side note. Um, uh, Romans eleven twenty four, for if that were cut off uh, of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to the nature of the good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Okay, so in the context here, Israel is likened to an olive tree, and Gentile Christians are likened to a wild olive tree, a wild olive branch who is grafted in through Jesus Christ. And of course, you go down to go up to verses 21 and 22 talks about don't boast against the branches don't go around boasting against Israel because you're a wild olive branch you're a spiritual you know you're spiritually adopted you can put that way you're an adopted child of God so don't go around boasting against the branches you're a guest in somebody's house you don't go around boasting against your host and telling them what to do and being nasty towards them uh, then you got Romans 11 25 the infamous chapter that all the replacement theology heretics get all uh, angry and foaming their mouth over. For I would not, brethren, that you, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Okay? The fullness of the Gentiles happens at the rapture. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Okay? And Paul goes on to say in verse 28, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. So, they are enemies of the gospel, absolutely. You go to Israel and try to preach the gospel, you will face sometimes violent opposition from, you know, very fanatic Jews. They are enemies of the gospel, but they are beloved for the Father's sake. Uh, then it goes down. But the verse on, uh, all Israel shall be saved, Paul is referencing, I have it here, Referencing this verse here in Isaiah, uh, oops, is it Isaiah 59? Let me just make sure. Uh, let me just make sure I have the right verse because I have this cross-referencing thing. This is pretty handy, actually. Uh, it is. I think it's Isaiah. I know it's somewhere in Isaiah. Let me just try to find it real quick. So it's. Uh, I think it's Isaiah. Yeah, so I think it's quoting from Isaiah 45, verse uh, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, and he shall not be ashamed or confounded, or nor confounded the world without end. Okay? 
Exactly. But then you also got, uh, quoting from Isaiah chapter 59. Sorry, I should have probably had this in my notes. This is kind of a little side thing. This wasn't actually in my notes. Uh, where is it? I think it's Isaiah 55 or 59. Here it is. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them with, uh, oh, sorry, and to them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. And he says, for, for, As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from, from henceforth and forever. Hmm, everlasting covenant. But basically... You got the, all Israel shall be saved, okay? God's not done with the nation of Israel. Right now, they have rejected Jesus Christ. They are very wicked. They have rejected their Messiah, Jesus Christ. And no, Anderson, Jesus Christ is not the Messiah to the Gentiles, okay? So, Sam Gipp saying that Jesus Christ is not our Messiah is correct. He was not saying that Jesus Christ is not the Messiah, okay? He is the Messiah, but he's not our Messiah as Gentiles. Gentiles are not promised the Messiah, Okay? You read Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 to 6, and Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 7. Gentiles are promised that the Messiah would be a light unto them, but it never says that he's the Messiah to the Gentiles. Okay? It just says that the Messiah will be a light unto the Gentiles. Why? Because Gentiles were given salvation through Jesus Christ. So anyway, that's the whole thing down there. But on this new covenant with Israel, okay? And we're going to get into the meat of the thing. I know this is just a little side thing, side note. Uh, where is it? Uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7. For if that covenant, first covenant be had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, I'm, I'm curious. Sam Gitbrod is a good question of, is Stephen Anderson from the house of Israel or the house of Judah? Because Anderson is now, if Christians are the spiritual Jews, which house are you from, Anderson? The house of Israel or the house of Judah? Very curious about that. Uh, verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, okay, who, is, who, who are the fathers he's referring to, in the day when I took them by hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Uh, when were Gentile Christians, when were our ancestors led out of the land of Egypt? They weren't. Talking about Jews here, physical Jews. Because they continue not my covenant, and regard I regard them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make. So this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts, and they and I will be uh, to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Uh, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Uh, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest, and I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities, who I remember no more. Okay, again, you compare that over to Romans chapter 11, verse 26. All Israel shall be saved. He'll turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And it says in verse uh, 13, And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made uh, the first old, now uh, that which, the, which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Okay, there's an everlasting covenant coming. Okay, God is not done with the nation of Israel, contrary to what the Stephen Anderson cult may say. So anyway, let's continue. In the regeneration, living and reigning with Christ for a thousand years, and part of that, obviously, are all the saved people from the 12 tribes of Israel from all time, from Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Isaac, are tribes that don't exist today on this earth, but it's going to be all the people resurrected from those tribes, and the 12 apostles will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, and the whole rest of the world will also be ruled and reigned over by Christians. Christians will live and reign with Christ a thousand years. This is the millennial reign. I, I believe in that. So anyway, so he goes on to fly out tonight, oh, there's no more 12 tribes today. Really, let's see about that. Because apparently... Uh, Stephen Anderson knows more than God and apparently I guess God made the mistake of not being able to preserve 12,000 tribes from 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes bad wording on my part but you know and I guess back to this thing of too of oh you know uh, they, they, they can't just still be there and, and 
in one of Anderson's sermons, he tries to use DNA science, and he doesn't even do it correctly. That's the funny part. He doesn't even do his little DNA science correctly. He does. He does. He goes backwards instead of you know forward. So it it's it just funny. So like so, not only is he trying to use science falsely so called to overthrow scripture, he doesn't even do the science correctly because real science lines up with scripture. Okay, God is the God of science. Science falsely so called, like like what atheism propagates. Yeah, it contradicts scripture because it's not real science. Real science will line up with the word of God. God is a God of science, but Anderson did the science completely wrong. But anyway, so Anderson just denied what uh, Revelation chapter 7 verses 4 to 8 says. And I heard them, uh, Revelation 7 verse 4, and I heard them, the number of them, which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. But I thought there's no more tribes. I thought they don't exist anymore. Hmm. I don't think so. Verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were se sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of ne Nephtalim, I hope I'm, saying, hope I'm saying that right, just, just thought I'd point that out, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon, were see, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ascar, Ascar were, see, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. I'd like to know which one of those tribes Anderson is part of. Because if he's a Jew, which tribe are you part of Anderson? Interesting. Um, but yeah, you got 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes sealed. Okay, then he goes on to say, that in this time of Jacob's trouble, and this I beheld, or after this I beheld, lo, a great multitude which no man can number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues. Kind of destroys your little doctrine there of Anderson of, oh, there is no more race. We're all of one blood. We, we, we all, no, there is no Jew, and there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Twisting those two scriptures. Acts 17, 29, you read the full verse. It says, yeah, yes, we're all of one blood. We all descended from Adam and Eve, but God determined the bounds of our habitation. You read that in the full verse. You know, have determined the bounds of their habitation. That's the full verse of Acts 17.26. He only quotes the first part of that verse. And with Galatians 3.28, you know, it's simply saying that a Jew is saved the same way as a Greek is. Okay, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Why? Because God is no respecter of persons. Okay, your race does not, does not determine whether you can get saved or not. Okay, anyone of any race can get saved. But it doesn't mean that there's, there's no more race and that race no longer exists or anything in the body of Christ. That's ridiculous. And it's funny too because the verse also says there's neither male nor female. So I guess there's no gender either. We're all just androgynous. Uh, no. It's just saying that God is not a respecter of persons. Anyone of any race or any gender of the two genders, okay, there's no transgenderism, can get saved. But yeah, of all kindreds, people, tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Okay? So, you have a multitude out of every kindred, tongue, people, and uh, nation being saved. Okay, I want to point something out. Where does it say they're called Christians? It doesn't say that. There are no Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble. And how do you know that? Revelation 7, verse 14. And I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Not the great tribulation, just great tribulation as a description. And look at this. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. See, they're saved by Jesus Christ. Um, hang on a second. Let's read it again. And have washed their robes. Um, they're washing their own robes. It's not Jesus. You see, a Christian, Jesus Christ is who washes you. Okay, you read about that in Ephesians, or sorry, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Jesus Christ washes you. But look at this. In the Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, they're washing their own robes. Why? Works. Okay. Sorry to all the non-dispensational heretics out there. Yes, there is works in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're having to do to be saved. They're washing their own robes. Okay, they're not saved by faith alone. You read Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses. Let me go there. And I, I'm just going off on a tangent because this really gets me fired up. Just a plain denial of basic scripture. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31, two. 46. Just read that passage, Matthew 20, 25, verse 31 to 46, the judgment at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Not one mention of faith in that entire passage. It all works. All the way through, not one mention of faith. Yes, they are saved by works in the time of Jacob's trouble. 
Revelation 14, 9 through 11. You can't take the mark of the beast. You can't take the mark of the beast if any man takes it, not just unsaved people. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 says if any man takes a mark, they end up in, in the lake of fire with God's wrath. Doesn't exclude saved people in this time period. You can't take the mark of the beast. So that just refutes this whole argument of, oh, Christians are going into this time of Jacob's trouble. Because if a Christian is sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, according to Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, and 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, goes into this time period, they could lose their salvation, thus causing God to be a liar. Because either you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, or you take the mark and you somehow become unsealed and lose your salvation, or God just, God just overlooks the fact that you took the mark and keeps you sealed anyway. Which causes God's word to be a liar. That's dispensationalism for you. But, you know, of course not. Of course, unsaved people like Anderson can't understand dispensationalism because they don't have the Holy Spirit to guide them. So, there's that issue as well. But, so don't be deceived by Anderson's um, replacement theology heresy. He flat out denies that, oh, oh, there's no more 12 tribes. Yes, there is. Okay, God is able to preserve 12 tribes for this time of Jacob's trouble and seal them. Okay, and it's worth noting too, there is eternal security in this time of Jacob's trouble in a sense, okay? Because the 12 tribes that are sealed, they have eternal security, okay? Because they're sealed with the seal of God. So, eternal security is partly there in the time of Jacob's trouble. If you're a Gentile, you're not sealed by the seal of God. If you're not one of those 144,000, okay, you, you have to obviously endure to the end. You can't take the mark of the beast. You don't have eternal security. But a Jew who is sealed with the seal of God, who's part of the 144,000, those are the only people in this time period who do have eternal security because they're sealed. So, there is that, okay? So there is eternal security for those 144,000, okay? And of course, you know, all the non-dispensational heretics will, will be foaming at their mouth and, oh, no, that, that's heresy, okay? It's scripture. So don't be deceived by Anderson's cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.